Gallium nitride. Gallium nitride field effect transistors. If your Class D power amplifier doesn't have them, you're falling behind. Catch up. So this is the new big thing in power amplifiers, or Class D power amplifiers, should I say. Class D? Well, we have Classes A and AB in audio, which make the waveform bigger. Class D chops up the waveform into on or off. The proportion of ons to offs represents the original waveform. Filter that and you have the waveform again, but bigger. You know, you have a Wikipedia if you want more detail, and there's plenty if you do happen to want it. The key is that a Class D amp can be efficient and small, with less power consumption, therefore better to save the planet. There are some disadvantages, but let's look at the positives for today. So, gallium nitride field effect transistors, GANFETs if you like, compared to bog standard silicon MOSFETs. What you get, according to my researches, is higher efficiency, higher switching speed, and stuff. Apparently leading to lower distortion and, in quotes, full band sound more delicate. Yes, that's a quote. I'll take it. So what do we get in the SMSLPAX out of the box? Well, the first thing I notice is that it's satisfyingly heavy. One might have thought that the greater efficiency of gallium nitride might allow an amp to be lighter. But I'm not sure the market is ready for lightweight amps. Other than NPA, of course, but that's a different thing. This amp is definitely very solid and has a high quality look and feel. A couple of oddities though, there are horizontal fins at the sides that look remarkably like heat sinks. But wouldn't the fins be vertical cause hot air rises, with gaps at the top to let the hot air out? Also do you see that lovely wide display on the front? Most of it is just a design feature. The actual display is quite tiny on the left. Big enough, but somehow I expected bigger. Also in the box is a manual and hurrah, the text is big enough to read with just normal reading glasses. Colour picks too. It is a bit brief maybe, but it covers the important points. I like a good manual. We like features, don't we? Loads of features. Well, this amp doesn't have all that many, so if you're a feature geek, you will be disappointed. To myself though, I like equipment that does the job. No fuss, no mess. And the PAX is designed to do just that, minimally. So input wise, we have two RCAs and two XLRs. That's it. No coaxial, no optical, and sob sob, no USB-C, which is, as you may know, my favourite. So you get what you get. Pure analogue, unbalanced or balanced as you please. Output-wise, well, it's a stereo power amp, and it has two pairs of terminals which you can connect bareback with nice big holes, or with banana plugs that Mr Darwin, Fellow of the Royal Society, advises you use very carefully in Europe. What's also lacking in the features department is an AUX output. 
which you might have wanted to send to a subwoofer. I feel that this is an omission, because it makes the amp an immediate non-starter for sub-users, unless they get their sub-signal some other way. Also absent is any form of EQ control. I approve. EQ in a power amp is an unwanted complication, at least for me. There is a volume control, by the way. Some power amps have them, some do not. And it's fine either way, depending on what you want. The volume is detented and goes from 0 to 70. I found the resolution perfectly fine enough. OK, let's start with amp mode. You can choose between RCA and XLR, which I guess you could use to switch between two sources if you want. There's a mono mode too, where the channels are bridged. I'll mention this again in a bit. Load type. I'm not sure whether I've seen this before, being able to choose 4 ohms or 8. Normally you just connect whatever speakers you have. I don't have any 4 ohm speakers, so I couldn't test this further. User interface style. Well, it's whether you like text or graphics. Personal choice. Dimmer. I actually quite like this. It turns the display off after up to 60 seconds. When I'm watching a movie, I prefer not to have any distractions to the point where I sometimes put something in front of whatever's trying to distract my attention. You can set the display to stay on all the time if you prefer. And some might. It's worth saying that when the display is off, it'll turn back on instantly the moment you change the volume. There's brightness control too, so that's good. I'm getting this from the manual, but if you want more detail, then Audio Science Review will be a good place to visit. Anyway, we have into 4 ohms a power output of 2.7 volts RMS into 22 kilo ohms. OK, that's a misprint. But it's specced at 250 watts RMS into 8 ohms. And that's a nice chunk of power, if tests confirm it. It should be described as average power, of course, rather than RMS. But I don't think we need worry about that. Now, here's a thing. Mono mode. Again, there seems to be a misprint in the manual for 4 ohms. But we should get 500 watts into 8. So a pair of these amps used as monoblocks should light up your speakers nicely. Other specs include total harmonic distortion plus noise 0.003%, signal to noise ratio 115 decibels, and no mention of frequency response. There is, however, a chart on SMSL's website showing that, as often seems to be the case with Class D, frequency response is load dependent, if you can hear it. I shouldn't need to say this, but I do test all of the equipment I review. So I tested the PAX with my Yamaha NS10M Studios, and with my Monster B&W801s. My ears may be old, and if I say that it sounds fine to me, you may take that with a pinch of salt. I found the volume control set at 33 good for my Yamahas, and maybe 34 or 35 for my B&Ws to achieve more than adequate loudness. Of course, this depends on the level coming in, but it's a rough indication of the comfort level of this amp. It's cruising. Now, a quibble. What should a power amp not have? I'll let you think for a second. A power amp should not have a switch on thump or click. I've come across many pieces of equipment over the years that have a switch on thump, sometimes really high level. Standard practice, therefore, is to switch the power amp on last, and for good measure, switch it off first, because a power amp never has a switch on thump. The PAX, well, I'm not going to call it a thump, but it's a definite click around six seconds after power on. This needs attention, and SMSL needs to improve it. I could live with it, though, in the context of what the PAX provides in other ways. Yes, I do like it, although you, as a potential purchaser, will have to put it in context with what it costs. I feel that a true hi-fi enthusiast would like to explore different equipment and technologies, and not having a gallium nitride Class D amp in their collection might be an omission. Put it this way, if someone in some kind of authority told me I had to get rid of all of my power amps, apart from the ones I really need, the SMSL PAX would be a candidate for being a keeper. See you soon.